Happy Monday, Cedar Park. First up, let's take a look into the new cell phone rules. The top three things and a new scholarship of the week. Plus your Monday sports report. Turn it up because the Wolfcast starts now. Good morning, Cedar Park High School, and welcome back to the Wolfcast. I'm Reagan Hill, filling in for Abby Martinez, and I'm joined by Jack Polshuk and Katie Whitmarsh. We want to start this morning with an announcement about a special den tomorrow in the library. To celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, the CPHS Equity Team and CPHS News are hosting a Q&A panel with some of our very own Hispanic staff, including head football coach Michael Quintero, registrar Alice Christofferson, assistant choir director Victor Torres, and day custodian Julia Cuellar. Abby Martinez will be moderating the panel and there will be snacks and refreshments sponsored by Chewy's. Make sure to sign up for the Library Den tomorrow if you want to join. All are welcomed. Now for our first story of the morning. Everybody has a phone and last year regulations on phone use during school was very relaxed. Reporter Reed Cummins is here to answer the begging question, how much regulation is needed? Reed. Thanks guys. Teachers and students shared their opinions on the new cell phone policies being implemented on our campus. Many teachers and staff agree that cell phones are becoming a huge distraction in the classroom, but English teacher Miss Iskra believes there can be a balance. It, there are enormous distractions. It's not that they can't be useful, it's that we have to kind of practice some self-discipline to figure out what is a good time to use it and what is not a good time. Uh, I remember last year that the only class that I had that had any sort of strict phone policies was my math class, but now it's like four classes this year, so that's a big change. Oh my gosh, cell phones are a constant distraction and problem in class. Um, you know, I think as, as a school, um, we've done a better job, I think, teacher to teacher, trying to make sure we're taking up cell phones that, that are not a distraction. Um, you know, they can be helpful, but, you know, the kids need to be able to put it away, and that's hard for kids to do, so that they can focus during the lesson. And then once the lesson is done, you know, I'm okay with them having the cell phone again. Many students in favor of less cell phone regulation may argue in the name of safety. When we have lockdown uh, drills uh, and in the past when we've had real lockdowns, uh, students being on their cell phones can be helpful. Communicating with people outside, um, letting their parents know that they're okay, uh, in that regard I think they're helpful. I mean it's nice that if there's something like that that the parents can actually be in contact with their kids and kids can let them know. Um, so I don't see that as much of a problem as, as, as something that could be positive. Remember to be responsible while using your phone in class. Now Caleb Taylor joins us at the top at the desk for your top three things you need to know this morning. Thanks Jack and good morning Cedar Park. First, Democratic Governor candidate Beto O'Rourke began a tour across Texas colleges on Friday starting at UT Austin. His tour aims to get as many young voters as possible registered to vote before the deadline of October 11th and his speech at the LBJ Library on the UT campus convinced 89 people to register. Beto said, quote, young people, students like those here now, are literally going to decide the outcome of this election. Next up, a scandal in the pro-fishing world. Fishermen Jacob Runyon and Chase Kaminsky won almost $30,000 this weekend at the Walleye Trail Fishing Contest in Ohio, or so they thought. After a closer inspection of the caught fish, tournament officials discovered they had been Stuffed with lead weights to score more points and the pair were disqualified. They are now under scrutiny, especially considering that they have won multiple other tournaments this year and hundreds of thousands of dollars in prize money. Finally, popular Minecraft YouTuber Dream revealed his face to the public on Sunday. His identity was kept a secret for the last three years despite his massive rise in popularity. He did this in an effort to quote, prove that anyone can do anything and it could be anybody under the mask. Those are the top three things for today. I'm Caleb Taylor and have a gnarly Monday, Cedar Park. Did he really say that last part? He did. That is the cringiest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I was I was a bit surprised. So what what were y'all's react? Y'all y'all everyone watched y'all saw? I have not like? seen it. No, no. I but I, I've heard all about him. I expected more. Yeah. You know, you hate to yeah. say it, but you would think like you hide your identity for like a couple years, and you'd come out and you'd be this like absolute a smoke shot. Yeah. That's a little rude, don't you think? Like, no. Not everybody has to be like a Greek god, you know. Like, well, well there was so much hype around it. It's like <laughs> just you know, you can't. I was expecting little... to be the other guy from that one <laughs> photo, you know. I was disappointed because you know. Yeah. Well, 
Thank you, Caleb. <laughs> Coming up next is the sports report with Katie and Reese, but first this break. and you're watching the Wolfcast. Welcome to the Wolfcast Sports Report. I'm Katie Whitmarsh. And I'm Reese Elizondo. This past Friday, the Cedar Park football team went against our recent addition to our district, A&M Consolidated. The Timberwolves held the lead the whole game up until the Tigers tied the game 10-10 and kicked for a game-winning field goal with just a few seconds left in the game, ending the night with a 13-10 loss for the Black Rain. This Friday, we make our way back out of Cedar Park and over to College Station to play the Cougars. Stay tuned for Friday's predictions of how this week's game will go. And over to our volleyball team, Hayes High School proved to be a tough opponent on Friday night as the girls fell 0-3. to Tomorrow night, the Lady Timberwolves start the second round of district against Lehman. So far, Lehman has not won a single district match this season, so we're hoping to keep that. That streak will continue, especially tomorrow night's game, which will be right here at home starting at 6.30. That's all we have for you today. Now over to Kira Cox with your Scholarship of the Week. Good morning and thanks Katie. I'm Kira Cox and this week's scholarship is the Foot Locker Scholar Athletes Program. This scholarship is for student athletes who demonstrate exceptional academic ability and strong leadership skills in their sports, in their schools, and within their communities. This scholarship is for senior students. Requirements include a completed application, a minimum of a minimum of a 3.0 GPA and to be currently involved in high school sports. This scholarship is worth $20,000 and will be awarded based on a point system. The deadline to submit an entry is December 24th. That's all I have for you today. For more information, you can check out their website, footlockerscholarathletes.com. With CPHS News, I'm Kira Cox. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kira. That's all we have for you today. Make sure you're keeping up with all of our content, so head on over to YouTube at CPHS News. You can also follow at CPHS underscore sports for updates during the games. Catch our next show on Wednesday for important information for how the senior class can register to vote, our next Hispanic Heritage Month spotlight, and a new pet of the week. Thanks for taking time to join us this morning. With CPHS News, I'm Katie Whitmarsh. I'm Jack Paulshick. And I'm Reagan Hill. Remember to make it a great day or not, the choice is yours.